Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals, synthetic colorants, and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. I believe women deserve to know what they are putting in their bodies and why. So at four months pregnant, I quit my job to reinvent the prenatal vitamin. We scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies and third-party tested for heavy metals and microbes. And this year, we were awarded the Purity Award from the Clean Label Project, the supplement safety certification that tests for 200 harmful chemicals and toxins. With Ritual, you'll know where your ingredients come from and why we use them. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast. Discover new opportunities together in a new Chevy. Meet up in an Equinox, winner of the J.D. Power Award for initial quality among compact SUVs. Lend a hand in the strong and capable Silverado or mix it up in a high-tech Trax with an available 11-inch diagonal touchscreen. Find family, friends, and fun in the Chevy that's right for you. Click to learn more. Chevrolet, together let's drive. For J.D. Power 2023 U.S. Initial Quality Study Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Imagine a place where ancient secrets and unnatural horrors lie dormant. A place where the veil between worlds is thin and the creatures of the night roam free. On Microphones and Monsters, a ragtag crew of travelers sets sail for one such destination. But beware, dear listener, for the horrors of Fazin are not for the faint of heart. Hey everybody, Adam Colbertson here, and we are finally recording again. What, we're recording again? We didn't, we stopped? What are we recording? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but if they listen to the last episode of the first campaign of Microphone of Monsters and listen to this one right afterwards, it'll be like no time's passed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to point out that Max has oh, already ah! said microphone yep. and monsters. Okay. <laughs> who is Sarah, that? We didn't invite you here so you could see my that? jokes. <laughs> In my ear. Okay. <laughs> We do have a new player. Uh, she has played with us in the past on the uh, uh, the Christmas special. What was it called mm -hmm. again? The Ghouls, uh, who, the save ghouls who Save Christmas. Yeah, The Ghouls Who Save Christmas. And uh, I will let her introduce herself. Sarah? Hey, guys. I'm Sarah. Like Adam said, I've played with these guys before for the Christmas one shot a couple of years ago. Uh, I've been around the creative type of community for a while now, first as a fan, and now I help out with a handful of behind the scenes things. I currently also produce our Twitch stream for Crown of the Oathbreaker, and I'm super excited to be a part of this project now. I will be playing Isodath. Um, there is not much to reveal about her race and class at this juncture, but she is a small creature, about four foot two, a little over a hundred pounds. Uh, she's about nine years old, but for her race, they mature at about age five. So she is the equivalent of like a 19 to 20 year old in human years. And she has dark skin. You can't see much of it. It's covered mostly by leafy flowering vines and those continue up and around her head and across her hair the hair you can see she has shiny black long hair uh, and then those vines and flowers are all very intertwined into it her arms and legs are completely overcome by the vines and she's pretty much just covered in flora um she wears no clothing of any kind because the plant material pretty much covers her entire body and the only thing she does wear is just a kind of short shawl-like cloak that she keeps pulled tight around her shoulders and uh, a lot of times will have pulled up over her head as well. And that's it. Cool. Very interesting character. I really like the backstory. Super excited to play her through. I'm excited to hear the backstory someday. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day. I'm sure it'll come out. <laughs> 
Uh, let's go with Max next. Me? Oh, gosh. <laughs> you. Um, You're on the hot seat. All right. Uh, the, my character uh, this time around is going to be Zarathin, who is a, uh, a Leonin. And for those who don't know, that is basically a kind of a lion humanoid. <laughs> Um, that's so funny. <laughs> that, was real, that was really good. <laughs> that was Thank a good you. cowardly lion laugh. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I was just like, what the fuck? Oh, um, no. so he's a, he's a fighter with a interesting subclass that is pulled from, uh, what was it? The, what was it? Is it Steinhardt? Steinhardt's? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. From, Steinhardt's uh, uh, Steinhardt's guide to the HUD. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, um, uh, uh, that will be re- revealed in time because it's it is a little mysterious, and when I play it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'll be doing a actual voice this time around. I will not be doing the fumbling Max Julian voice. <laughs> um, I'm not very good at voice acting, um, but I will I will stick to it as best I can. Only one way uh, to get better. It's, it's very easy. True. But by it's, the end of the first season, you'll mostly have your character's voice nailed. The, okay, yeah. that's fine. Take, take, take my word for it. Hey, tr- <laughs> tr- <laughs> trust me, I, I have no like illusions that I'm going to actually keep a, a consistent voice for the first bit here either. And that that's even with a little more experience doing some voice acting. I was yeah. very impressed at Steven's work for season one, so I will yeah. I will try to aspire to those heights. Yeah, like even even me, like at the beginning of, of campaign one, everybody's voices were different than what they ended up being. Yeah, that's OK. <laughs> um, outside of that, um, backstory wise, we'll just kind of come up naturally uh, as kind of we progress. Um, he oh, gosh, I, I, I have the description, but I need like the specific description because it was cool. It was in a um, in the DM. Yeah, hold on, let me pull it up right now. Okay, uh, so um, description of Zarathin: dark gray fur with several uh, bright metal piercings in both of the ears. Uh, there are dark purple tattoos on both the arms. These tattoos move and writhe and change, and there will be just kind of an explanation as to why that is. Lots of scars and scar tissue uh, all across uh, Zarathin's body, including his face. The scars have a have a kind of like a sickly glow to them. Like when you stare at them, you feel uneasy and unnerved. And doing so for a long period of time will increase that feeling. Um, Zarathin has uh, dark amber eyes. Uh, his mane is is um very stark black and is drawn into kind of a beard um that is very matted not very kept up with um in terms of how he presents himself he presents himself as a predator he is a killer and just being in the presence with him just oozes a lethality that is tangible uh and that's Zarathin. very very different from julian this is incredible <laughs> <from Julian. laughs> it's gonna be fun to transition they both sound they're, they're both such cheerful characters mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> right one day i'll do a happy character not today <laughs> happy characters who wants happy characters right? yeah that's overrated <laughs> hey, Just because i want to i want to say yeah go ahead steven go ahead. Oh, you want me to go okay yeah. i'm rufus i'm a little orange cat <laughs> i'm about a year old i have i have a little pet mouse named mr mouse a little gray with a little pink nose uh he's super cute i i'm playing a rogue it's a interesting subclass from the cthulhu mythos book thing that we play out of i've got some yeah specifically armor. for dreamlands cats yeah yep i i've got a little little tiny suit of leather armor and uh i'm just excited about everything let's go i did this this looks neat Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> That's about it. There's, there's not a very complex character. There's no glowing yeah. scars or, you know, leaf leaf hair or whatever it was. <laughs> leaf hair. <laughs> yeah, Rufus is, is, is coming in as a as a pretty clean slate. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I mean, he's no very tragic year old. Backstory, what do you expect? Guaranteed. Like may, maybe a year old even. Like like someone. Yeah. It's like how much how much history do you expect him to have in a year? Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, that's that's about it. 
Very excited to be part of everything. <laughs> and Richard. Yeah, Richard, you go. Are you okay. also playing a happy-go-lucky cat? Um, Actually, I am not playing a happy-go-lucky cat. So uh, I'm going to be playing Lucius Hawthorne, uh, who is a cleric of the Guardian domain, uh, which is also pulled from Steinhardt's. It is... Well, going to be interesting, I'll say the least, but I think it's interesting that we do have like a one-year-old cat and a nine-year-old <laughs> because I'm very much in the opposite direction. Uh, Lucius is an Asimar that is uh, 150, which in equivalent human years, I'd say probably like 70 or so. Um, he has very silvery, uh, like long hair that's uh, a lot thinner than it used to be the hairlines kind of pushing back same silver uh in a, a pretty uh neatly kempt beard wears clothes that are fancy but uh notably like kind of old-fashioned including a uh, heavy cloak which has some nice like embroidery around the edges what kind of embroidery just really really nice fancy like a kind of a gold filigree kind of thing where it just kind of like Ooh. loops around are there any tassels <laughs> um <laughs> You know what? Yeah, there there will be tassels like at the the uh, the edges of like the collar. Oh, so okay. any bedazzling on it, <laughs> very important. <Okay. laughs> yeah, Lucius is a. Uh, I, I I think everybody's an interesting character, and everybody pulled <laughs> stuff from Steinhardt except for Stephen for Rufus, yep. which is fully from the Cthulhu mythos. Um, Stick with the OG. Yeah, and speaking of Cthulhu Mythos, we are playing a Sandy, Sandy Peterson's Cthulhu Mythos. Ghoul Island uh, will be the name of this campaign. And uh, honestly, Quick, I, Adam, I got... describe every single character that you're going to do in the campaign. <laughs> uh, no. I, <laughs> I, uh, I actually won a giveaway, and I got all these books, and I've really wanted to play them. So we're starting with Ghoul Island. Everybody voted on this one over the others, and we'll play the other ones later yay cool <laughs> that, that's a, i have a feeling a this one's gonna be about ghouls enthusiastic <laughs> or islands, uh, yeah, yeah. Or islands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing but islands and ghouls <laughs> but but they're not it's not like an island of victor stodge so yeah uh, yeah it's 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 weird like I'm, I'm i keep hearing it over and over again and for some reason i'm associating with it scooby-doo on ghoul island yep <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Um, what if it's it about is... a ghoul that is an island? Ooh. That would be cool. Oh, wow. And horrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's deep. That's deep, Richard. Now, mm. I will point out that uh, we will not be using crit folk, uh, the term crit folk in this, like we did in Dark World Chronicles, because that was for that setting. Uh, this one, it is the mythos ghouls, not uh, undead ghouls. They are living creatures. So in this particular timeline universe etc or whatever they're just not as civilized is that is that yeah, what i'm gathering and, yeah well and i would say that not every ghoul society inside of uh the other campaign world um uh, not all of them went by crypt folk they go on different names based on location their interactions with the people of the city that they eat and everything their relationship with with everybody so uh that is that is a slight difference this time uh mm -hmm. that i wanted to go ahead and point that out now that's why we're not using crypt folk crypt folk this time yep i will try not to mess that up like i totally <laughs> messed that up going I, into the other campaign i i i said ghoul all the time in the other one even though i came up with with the i, did, too, did, it I did it on purpose <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh other than that, uh, welcome back to Microphones and Monsters, and we hope that you enjoy this new campaign. And or else, <laughs> or else, yes, or else. I yeah. like. I love when we start with threats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you don't like this one, we're just going to have to keep doing it until you like it. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. that's 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 an. That's what we did statement. last time. <laughs> Dinosaurs next time. No. Oh. <laughs> Not the mama. Mm. I was thinking clever girl, but that works too. <laughs> <laughs>
I believe women deserve to know what they are putting in their bodies and why. So at four months pregnant, I quit my job to reinvent the prenatal vitamin. We scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies and third-party tested for heavy metals and microbes. And this year, we were awarded the Purity Award from the Clean Label Project, the supplement safety certification that tests for 200 harmful chemicals and toxins. With Ritual, you'll know where your ingredients come from and why we use them. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast.